Well, Mark, I will try to get in. I don't know whether the place is open, but what I know is that there is the f country's four presidents until now. They have a special place. And even as President Uhuru Kenyatta was opening, remember, uh, as the as the transition of 2017, there was the creation of the library. And in that library, oh, it's actually open. Uh, I don't know whether we are going to get... Uh, we're going to get in trouble because of getting in here, but this is where it is. There is even a tunnel as you get in. Then uh, there are screens that are showing what is happening here. And we do expect probably as we get deeper into this place, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get the inscription about what Kenya is all about. And, uh, and, and it is there since... Uh, 1963. Remember, we are celebrating the independence and when Kenya got that independence. And as you get in, Yako uh, Maandishi, Handaki la Mashahidi. Handaki la Mashahidi ukumbusho wetu wakila moja wa Kenya waliopoteza maisha katika nyakati nyingi nzami suko suko zilizo kabili Kenya kama taifa. It is all about telling us where we have come from as a country. And uh, interestingly, Mark and your team, I don't know whether it's getting dark as we go in, there are names of people who fought for this independence as a country. I, 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 can, I can read probably one. Miga alifariki tarehe sita mwezi wa kumina moja 1916. That is uh, 6th uh, November 1916. Alikufa wakati wa vita vya kwanza vya dunia akitumikia Uingereza chini ya kikosi cha ofisi ya kazi ya kijeshi ya Afrika. He died during the World War I in service of the United Kingdom under the East African Military Labor Bureau. So what does this basically mean? And uh, as you go down on both sides, these are the names of those people that actually fought for the country's liberation. And it is starting from 1916. As you move on, you get into 1917. And there are those peoples whose names have been engraved here to mean that they are gone, but they are not gone to us as a country. Probably we will walk in to see what else is here. There is even a name of a... Uh, in 1953, there is Wajohi... Kahogura. Uh, these are those names that have been engraved and probably they will be engraved in the lives of Kenyans. Every person, even those who will be bringing their children here, the history will have been engraved. And that history basically means that President Uhuru Kenyatta was very keen. This is a concentration camp and uh, there is this photo. You can see a British officer and there are Africans within an area where they have been placed. And these are people who did not have so much voice. So it says the British troops round up suspected Mau Mau members at an operation in Anvil in 1954. So there is all that history that Kenyans need to know. This is in 1952 when there was, uh, when there was the de declaration of emergency by Sir Evelyn Barin. And all this is actually, is actually showing what is a country we have gone through and what needs to be told? Remember, Mark Masai and uh, your panel, most of us may have just learned the history in the books and most of the people who did history did it for examination purposes. But this place, this museum offers that opportunity for you to come learn your history and basically also go as far as now engraving it in your body and all in your mind so that it gives you that uh, opportunity. I can see from that end, it has writings about the birth of Kenya. I can see from also, if we can go into one of these rooms, there is so much engraving about what has happened as a country and all that. And uh, this is what we are talking about, the museum and what Kenya is all about. This is a locomotive 2401. This is one of those locomotives that actually drove people in those ancient years. And it says that, uh, this says that uh, they were also called tribal locomotives because they were named after local communities like the Maasai of Kenya. They were imported into the country in the year 1904. So, um, there is too much darkness here, but uh, 
also, as we can go, we don't want to step onto this. We don't know how fragile it is. But you can see also from there, that is the railway that was built in the 1900s. Remember, there was that uh, railway that was built in 1901 that went all the way to Uganda. So these locomotives are a key reminder of what has happened in this country. And that history is captured here. And also you can see the saxophone. You can even see some of what we as a country produce and we have produced for so long. So there is so much that is telling of this country's history. There is uh, the sausages, there is the coffee, and everything that is very critical about this country. So. Um, Basically, uh, Mark and your panel, there is so much that the history, and this goes beyond, and this goes beyond uh, what is told and spoken at the podium today. What the leaders will say today at the podium goes beyond what is captured in this historic monument that was opened by President Uhuru Kenyatta yesterday, and it will go as far as giving you an opportunity as a Kenyan to learn more about this. There are a num children will come to this museum, uh, families will be bringing their people, and fathers and mothers will have an opportunity to discuss with their children what it is all about. So we are keeping tabs on what is happening. We'll be going to where the dignitaries are. And uh, it, is, it is actually, Mark, this is a magnificent piece of work that has been done by the army of this country by the KD of the Kenya Defense Forces and this will become one of those places that will be most revered and it will capture the aspirations of President Uhuru Kenyatta. He will speak about it today uh, definitely in his speech even as he goes as far as telling us the achievements that his government has done in the last 10 years. We expect probably that his speech will be longer but I will take it back to you as we also go to position ourselves at a point where we'll be speaking to the dignitaries to get their expectations of what this Madaraka Day is all about and what they do expect. Another thing, Mark, and it will present further for discussion with your group, is that there are reports that there has been serious political mobilization. The numbers out there within an hour have grown in leaps and bounds and the stadium, the Uhuru Gardens, is already so full. So the Uhuru Gardens that was known for Uhuru Gardens to Kojaba, meaning that people were coming here to eat, cut, and drink uh, alcohol, is now being transformed into a piece of art that you can come enjoy with family and friends. Mark Masai. Kennedy Murray, the uh, professor is looking at his phone, and, and Pesta Balance hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> On national television, 